Hey guys, welcome to another ranking, and here is my ranking for all of Roland Emmerich's movies. Uh, a lot of you are probably wondering why, why am I doing a ranking of Roland Emmerich's movies? Well, that's very easy. Um, uh, it's January, and any time the month of January comes, I only think of one thing. Very bad movies. And the director that I think of who makes bad movies is, well, a lot. Like Michael Bay, Tommy Wiseau, Paul W. Anderson, you know. But I think of Roland Emmerich. He makes just these awful disaster movies or when he tries to experiment with action or science fiction. He is just a failure of a filmmaker. And I thought I'd rank all the movies that I've seen. I know he's done some, like, TV movies. Independent films, I've seen a few of his independent films, and I thought I'd rank all his movies from his worst to his not-so-worst. <laughs> uh, I just thought this would be a fun little ranking for you guys. It's January, no new movies are coming out. I think the first movie I'll probably be seeing this year is Scream, which I'm actually looking forward to. It's a January movie, so please don't suck. Anyways, let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Roland Emmerich's movies. Coming at number 15 is 2012. 2012 is a disaster movie. This is what he he's, he's best at. He's known for. He's the master master of. Uh, 2012 is was a huge movie when it came out because it came out in 2010. Two years before the 2012 conspiracy, you know, the Mayan calendars ending and everyone thinking the world was going to end in 2012. So Roland Network banked off of that because he knew people in general were all about conspiracy theories and, you know, people actually believed in that nonsense. So he made an entire disaster movie on the 2012 incident, which there was no incident. <laughs> Nothing happened in 2012. But... He made a lot of money off this. This movie was a huge success, box office-wise. Maybe not critically, because it is a garbage, absolute garbage movie. I I, I hate everything about it. I think it is his worst mo movie. I, I hate that it exists, because the movie is solely made to make money and to, you know, profit off this thing and profit off people people's fears. And the movie is just absolute nonsense and ridiculous. Like... Uh, if anyone was afraid of 2012 during this time, I think after watching this movie, you would, you know, be like, you know, maybe, 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 maybe there's nothing to fear. <laughs> the movie has John Cusack, Amanda Peet, Woody Harrelson, Shota Eji for a lot of pretty big actors. None of them are good in this movie. They're all there for the paycheck. There's literally just ridiculous scenes. There's like a scene where John Cusack is driving a limousine through earthquakes and all these destroyed buildings. Uh, Woody Harrelson plays like this dirty hippie, and shows how Edge Four is acting so good. It's like he's in a different movie. <laughs> it's 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 such a bizarre movie, and nothing about it works. And it's like two hours and forty five minutes. So yeah, I think this is worst film. Uh, it's probably not the most agonizing film to sit through, but I hate everything about it. Coming to number fourteen is Independence Day Resurgence, another cash grab. Well, like, Roland Emmerich. Every time I think of Roland Emmerich, I just think of him as a cash grab filmmaker he's not a good filmmaker but he makes a profit and he's like oh independence day in the 90s was a big hit people talk about it people quote the shit out of it so let's just make a sequel decades later and it's so dumb and stupid and i i don't even like the first independence day but like i i, I think if you were a huge fan of the first independence day you'd just be insulted by this movie it's just it shits on all the characters from the first film it makes almost the first film pointless, and it almost tries to be com comical, like, especially the stuff they do with Brent Spiner and stuff. Uh, it's just a, again, another disaster alien invasion movie with bad one-liners and one-dimensional characters. Yeah, and it's, it's, I did a whole review of it when it came out, so yeah, this movie sucks. Number 13 is called Making Contact from 1987. This is one of his lower-budget films. Comedy, thriller awful film it, it the movie you could just see the low budget feel of this film and this is like one of his earliest films and you can just see the true untalent <laughs> that is is coming to the industry watching this movie this movie is bad has bad acting a bad story i know it's not meant to be taken seriously 
So, yeah, don't take it seriously, but also just don't watch the movie. <laughs> Number 12 is White House Down. In 2013, we had two uh, president movies about people trying to assassinate the president. Olympus is Falling with Gerard Butler was pretty good. Then they made sequels and ruined it. White House Down is the stupidest, goofiest movie ever. Shining Tatum and Jamie Foxx are both terrible. They have no charisma or chemistry in the film. The action sucks. The comedy isn't good. I don't know what kind of satire he's playing at. It's just a ridiculous film. And I know some people had a lot of fun with it. Some people call it a guilty pleasure. I just call it absolute nonsense. And wasn't my shtick. So, yeah. Number 11 is Godzilla. I know a lot of people would say this is his worst. And it is one of the... It's a horrible film. It's like a 1 out of 10 film. But I this this movie gets a little points for me because it's just so bad. It's, it's good. Like Matthew Broadwick's, Broadwick's performance is just so bad it's it's kind of funny that's a lot of fish you're a huge godzilla fan like yeah th th this is just horrendous to sit through because this movie knows nothing about godzilla and the world of godzilla and i'm not even a huge like godzilla fan i haven't even seen all the movies but i've seen quite a few and this movie is just a goofy b-movie monster film and with, again, shady characters, very dated CGI, and it, it, it doesn't work in the slightest bit, and it's everything wrong with a, with a Hollywood blockbuster. It does everything that you, you could possibly do wrong. But again, what gives it a little point is there are some moments in this movie that they're just so bad, it's pretty fucking funny. So, yeah, gets points for that. Number 10 is Moon 44, not to confuse you with Child 44 with Tom Hardy. Do you remember any of these movies? Of course not. Another low-budget, stupid Roland well, Emmerich movie. Again, this is like when he was like just testing his genres and stuff. And another bad movie, bad actors, bad characters, and bad storytelling. So, that's all I gotta say about that. Number 9 is Stargate. Stargate was a big movie. I think this is like... I think this is one of his first big movies, you know, one of his first huge science fiction epics. Hated this movie. I know it, like, spawned a bunch of television shows. That's a huge cult following this movie. That's cool and all. I hate, absolutely hate this movie. I hate its uh, mythologies. I hate its aliens. I, I don't like its worlds. I, I hate its cheesy dialogue. I get it, like, some people have guilty pleasure for this, because I have my guilty pleasures for some films. Just this is not my thing. I even try to watch a couple of the shows, and just, they're not Star the world of Stargate is just not interesting, and they don't m create interesting characters, or invest me in any of the stories. Just, I, I hate it, and I hate this movie in general, because it started the Stargate phase, so uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan of this movie. Uh, I get that has a fan base. That's cool. Just, it's not. I'm not part of the fan base. Uh, number eight is, uh, well, not last year. 2019? Is it 2019's Midway. I hated this movie when it came out. But, like, when you watch Roland Emmerich's movies, you realize this movie is actually, like, one of his somewhat better ones by default. Uh, there are a couple cool action sequences in the film. I will fully admit that, but it is a generic paint-by-numbers war film. It is literally like Pearl Harbor and other stupid, like, generic horror film, like Black Hawk Down and everything. Um, it doesn't have any interesting characters. It doesn't have a good story. It doesn't even have a message to say about war or the incidents it's going through. I don't know. Just I, I watched this movie... And I was just really uninterested and kind of bored throughout the whole film. And just I personally did not like it. But I know actually there were people that did like it. That's cool. But yeah, it's not for me. <laughs> Number seven is Universal Soldier with Jean-Claude Van Damme. This is another movie that's kind of like Godzilla. It's it's so bad. It's funny. Like these soldiers, they're built to like destroy and everything. And Jean-Claude Van Damme, who is like Arnold Schwarzenegger, a very wooden actor, and the fact that he has to play, like, a robot, and a robotic performance is just funny, and him trying to be human is funny. And it's not meant to be funny, but it comes off super funny. I know this movie spawned a bunch of sequels, never saw any of the sequels, but I have seen this movie, and I watched it a few times as a kid, and I always thought it was kind of a cool movie. It's not good. It, it, it's got horrible writing, and... 
again, Roland Emmerich doesn't know how to create good action or create any decent tension in any films, but Van Damme can always make a movie interesting and entertaining. Sometimes not always in the best ways, but, you know, it works enough for me. Terrible film, but he makes the movie enjoyable. Number six is Stonewall. Stonewall tried to have a captivating story. Maybe in the hands of a different director, the film could have worked, but this one didn't. It came off clunky, unoriginal, and I didn't know what the what he was going for with this movie. I, just, I don't know what he was trying to say. I don't know what he was doing. He was just, he was out of his league. He was out of his league. Donnie, you're out of your element. I know like a lot of actors in this movie were trying, just it, it fails for me. Uh, it is definitely one of his, I guess, better movies by default, but to me, it just didn't work. It fell short for me, really much. Number five is Independence Day. I don't like Independence Day. I, do, I don't. I, I know there's a huge fan base for Independence Day. I just am not part of the fan base. I do not like Independence Day. I am very well aware there is good stuff in it, though. Like, there are fun lines. Will Smith is great. I love Will Smith in this movie. He is the definition of cool in this film. And, like, his line when he punches the alien, welcome to Earth, like, all great stuff. All great stuff. And even Jeff Goldblum is pretty cool in the movie. Like, there are elements, like, even, like, Bill Pullman's speech. Is, it's, it's, it's an epic speech. The 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. It, just, it never... It never hit me. Even when I was younger, my brother loved this movie. I just, I never got into it. And just, I always found it overrated because I know it's not even like a really praised film, but like, especially when I was younger, everybody talked about Because I was born in the 90s and shit. Everybody talked, talked about Independence Day and everybody loved it. And I just, I never understood the love. Like, <clears throat> I, I'm not saying like I despise it or anything. I just, I don't see the the enjoyment of it it's like and i know i like some really ridiculous films like i i'm a commando fan and the running man and flash gordon and conan the barbarian all ridiculous films i love them some people don't but this i understand some of the fan base but to me eh, no nah. <laughs> number four is anonymous i appreciate him actually trying to do something different and unique, especially the stuff about, like, Shakespeare and stuff, and again, like I said with Stonewall, if this was maybe directed by a different filmmaker, I think it would have worked better, maybe had a better writer, like, maybe, like, a, I don't know, like, an Aaron Sorkin or a David Kep or something wrote this, I think it would have worked a lot better, um, maybe, like, a Tom Hooper directed this movie, or, um, even, um, Joe Wright, Joe Wright could have probably done this really well, I, I it's so clunky and it's so unorganized this film and the movie goes in different directions and it should have stayed it's hard i don't want to spoil too much but like the first act was actually interesting and if the movie would have kept it going with that it it, it went to different ways that i didn't like and i don't like how it ended and some of the acting choices and the some of the casting choices I thought was very confusing and stuff. And I could tell this movie could have been very fascinating. And I think it could have been really good. But, like, again, in the hands of Roland Emmerich, it just falls flat for me. Uh, interesting idea and concept, but doesn't work thanks to Roland Emmerich. <laughs> Number three is 10,000 BC. I'm going to say this again. 10,000 BC can work in the hands of a different director. Like, I could see, like, a Wolfgang Peterson like, doing this movie, or, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, Wolfgang Pearson is the first one, like, that comes to mind to do, like, this kind of film and stuff, uh, I just, the idea is cool, seeing, like, the, the caveman days way before technology and all that stuff, uh, again, the, there is some interesting messages, and there's some pretty cool visuals in the movie, there's even an action sequence that's really cool and very well done, but the movie doesn't work. 
It doesn't have any interesting characters. It doesn't have a single good performance in this entire film. Um, it has such choppy editing, and it leaves little to no impact on anybody. And again, if you had like a talented filmmaker and like maybe better writers and you got a better cast, the film could have worked. But no, it's just another forgettable, generic film that no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> Good job, Roland. <laughs> Number two is The Day After Tomorrow. The only disaster film that I can actually say is eh. It's uh, it's eh, eh. Uh, the Day After Tomorrow has a lot of generic shit, a lot of stupid characters. There's, like, this homeless guy in this movie that he is just insufferable in this film. Like, he's, like, the comic relief, and I fucking hated him. I wish he would have died, but he doesn't die. I like Dennis Quaid in the movie, though. I, I think he's the standout. I think he's very good in the film. I like that he's, like, risking his life to save his son. I even enjoy Jake Gyllenhaal in the film as the son I understand, that's, like, the most interesting part of the movie, is this, like, father-son who, you know, weren't there in each other's lives very much, but he's going to go across the United States to go save his son, even though he could die. I think that's interesting. I think that could have been just the whole movie. I don't like they needed, a like, a disaster movie or something. I think the movie should have just been, like, I don't know, like a... Maybe, like, a disaster happened in, like, one city or something. Maybe, like, a flood or something happened... And a dad goes to save his son. Like that, that, I think that's would have been more interesting. But the movie is a huge disaster film. The whole world's about to end by like an ice age and stuff. Some of it gets very ridiculous and it gets a bit silly and gets a little overly long and stuff. But I think the stuff with the father and son thing, a father going to save his son, I like that. I think that works very well. And I think Jake Gyllenhaal and Dennis Quaid really saved the film. But to me, it, it still comes off very generic and just not very memorable. And I don't think it works super well. I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's definitely one of his better ones. Clearly, it's number two. But again, I, if better, a different filmmaker would have done it, I think it could have been done better. Anyways, number one, I will actually talk very positive of this because it's shocking. Because I like all these movies are just like terrible, terrible, terrible Terrible, terrible, bad, 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 mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. So we're going from terrible to bad, mediocre, to actually a damn good film. Because believe it or not, Roland Emmerich has done one good movie. And that is The Patriot. The Patriot, I can legit say, is a good movie. I, uh, it, it's so good that I, I, I don't believe Roland Emmerich di directed the movie. <laughs> I, do, I just don't believe it. I, 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 I can't believe it. It makes no sense. He, he can't do a single good movie, but he did The Patriot for some reason. Patriot is a good film. I like it. I like Mel Gibson. I love Jason Isaacs as the villain. Heath Ledger is very good in the film. It has really good epic action sequences. Uh, it's a very long movie, but it holds your interest. It tells a very interesting historical story. It's very inaccurate in a lot of things, but... It's still a fun, enjoyable film. I get connected with the lead characters and his family. And I actually have fun with this movie. I, I get It's a movie I watched when I was younger. When it, when it came out, when it first came out, we rented it from Blockbuster. And I watched it all the time. And just I, I thought it was very good. And still to this day, it holds up. I think it is a good film. And I'm just baffled. Rule never directed a good movie. But you know what? At least he, he's got one. It's more than, you know, Tommy Wiseau or <laughs> Edward, Ed, Ed, Edward Dewa Jr. could say or uh, Paul W. Anderson. But, yeah, Patriot. I have nothing bad to say. I like the film. Anyway, so, yeah, that was my ranking of all of Roland Emmerich's movies from at least for to my favorites. In the comments section, please tell me what is your ranking of Roland Emmerich's movies in your guys' opinion. And if you haven't seen enough of his movies, just give me your favorite or your least favorite. Yeah. Comment below, let me know, and as always, like this video, please subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.